Hello everyone, welcome back to Worship Drumming, and we're going to be learning six different drum beats that we can use to play with any worship song. This is perfect for if you don't know how to play the verse, chorus of a song, bridge, you can throw these beats in there and be able to play through that song no problem. And also if you're just sitting there at practice and the new song gets introduced and you need something to just be able to play with the band before you learn exactly how to play it, these are really good drum beats for that. Also, let's go ahead, hop over to the kit and learn all six of these drum beats. Starting off with our first groove here, most of you know this, it's your simple kick drum on one and three, snare drum on two and four, eighth notes on the hi-hat, but if you don't know it, I'm going to go ahead and teach it, and if you already know it, go ahead and skip through it since most people know this, but if you don't know this, this is a really good drum beat and a really good place to start, and I'm going to kind of quickly go through it because it should be pretty simple for most of us. Right hand is playing eighth notes on the hi-hat. One, and two, and three, and four, and kick drum on counts one and three, and then snare drum on counts two and four. A quick addition that you can do to this beat is play your three in the and of three on your kick drum also. Let me go ahead, plug the ire again, and we'll see what this sounds like. Real basic and simple there, but that's definitely a beat that's going to help you be able to play any worship song. Next, we're going to sort of take the same beat. We're going to still have eighth notes on the hi-hat, kick drum on one and three, snare drum on two and four. Add one more snare drum into the mix. Snare drum is going to be on the uh of two. So real slow. One and two and a uh, three and four. You can still add that and of three on the kick drum if you'd like. One and two and a uh, three and four. So it's a real good way to add a ghost note and if you haven't practiced ghost notes yet, but this doesn't have to be a super loud note. It can be a loud note if you want, uh, or a normal note, I guess, however you want to call it. Whatever you want with it, make it a ghost note if you want, or make it just a normal snare hit as loud as your other snare hits that are on two and four. And now what we can also do is, uh, if you want to, you can also move this to the uh of four and just make beats two and four the same. So it'd be one and two and a three and four and a one. So uh, if you add it there, it sounds more like a fill that you're playing, like a little small fill there at the end. You go ahead and plug this into the eye rig and we'll see how it sounds. So go ahead and do what I did there and sort of just experiment uh, with where you want to place that and uh, how loud you want that note to be. Uh, definitely a beat that I use all the time. That is one I will use to play the verse of a song, the chorus of a song. Yes, definitely a very nice beat to use. I use it all the time. Next, I'm going to show you this beat and you probably already know this beat, but I'm going to play it for you guys. But even if you already know it, keep watching while I'm teaching this beat because we're going to move it around the kit in a really cool way. Let's talk about what's the same so far. Eighth notes on the hi-hat snare drum on two and four kick drum on one but now we're going to change our kick drum to a different beat and we're going to add two more snare hits one's going to be the same from the last beat but let me go ahead and tell you where everything's at and then i'll go real slow before i plug the eye again your snare drum is going to fall on two the uh of two the e of three and four hi-hats on eighth notes kick drum on one and the uh of three. Real slow, it's like this. One and two and a three e and a four and one and two and a three e and a four and one and two and a three e and a four and. 
So that's how it sounds real slow. So I'll go ahead and play it for you and then I'm gonna show you how to move it around the kit so you get a feel of how to play it here. Once you move it around the kit, it gives it an entire different feel. A quick couple things I forgot to mention. Those 16th notes you're playing on your snare drum, play those ghosted. I also forgot to mention, if you don't know what 16th notes are, uh, you might want to go look up a video, but I'll go ahead and tell you real quick. So 16th notes are counted 1E and a 2E and a 3E and a 4E and a... So 1E and a is one beat, and if I put four of those together, I get 16 making it 16th notes. But moving right along to how to move this around the kit. We're not gonna worry about our left hand playing ghost notes now. Our left hand's gonna go ahead and hit every note just as it normally would. Let's go ahead and hop into this. So our right hand is gonna mainly stay on the floor tom. Our left hand is gonna be playing our snare drum, rack tom, mid tom, and our right hand will also play our mid tom for one beat, but it's not uh, it's not exactly necessary if you don't want to do it. I think it just it helps me flow through this beat. My hand is still going to be playing our eighth notes, the one and two and three and four and kick drum is still the same on one and the uh, of three. But now our left hand is what's going to be moving around. It is going to be playing one and two and a uh, three e and a four. So the exact same notes it played earlier, it's just gonna walk down the drums and then come back to its original starting spot at the end. You can move your right hand up here to the mid tom on the and of two. Still slow, everything's like this. One and two and a three E and a four and one and two and a three E and a four and one more time one and two and a three E and a four and nothing too complicated just go ahead practice that a little bit practice moving your hands around and now i'll go ahead and plug this in and we can listen to how this sounds If you've ever heard the song God's Not Dead by the Newsboys, that exact beat is used in the pre-chorus and also the very last repeat of the bridge. So I use the playing it on the toms the most. I will rarely ever play it on the hi-hat, snare, and kick during a song. But it's a really good feel for any song on the bridge. Another example is What a Beautiful Name It Is by Hillsong. Uh, whenever I get to the bridge of that song, I don't know how to play the bridge the way they do it. So I just go ahead and throw this in. It gives it that real nice, powerful drive that that song needs to get through there. And if you don't have a mid tom, don't worry. I'm sure you can find out how to be able to just play it between your floor tom and your rack tom. Just leave the mid tom out of the equation and either play it on your rack tom or play your left hand again on your rack tom or play it on your floor tom. It doesn't really matter a whole lot. I'm sure you can still get a nice sound out of it. That's our first three beats and those are all, as you've noticed, in 4-4. Four, four. Now we're going to move on to our next three beats, which are going to be in 6-8. This is something really, really important. A lot of people, whenever they make like top seven drum beats you can use for rock or like top whatever drum beats you can use for this genre of music, they mainly play most of it in 4-4 four, four timing. Not that they fail to realize 6-8 timing, it's just that some people are so like just caught up in the 4-4 four, four timing that that's the, it's the easiest thing to teach. It's what everyone learns is 4-4 four, four timing. A majority of songs are played in 4-4. Four, four. You need to learn 6-8 timing, and I can name a lot of songs, honestly, that are played in 6-8. Uh, How He Loves by David Crowder. Come As You Are by David Crowder. Oh Come To The Altar by Elevation Worship. When Death Was Arrested. There's just a whole lot of songs that use 6-8 timing, 
And I remember when I first started playing drums, I didn't know what 6-8 timing was, and so I'm trying to play with how he loves, and I'm trying to play along with how he loves us, because I've never learned 6-8 timing, and I'm trying to play it in 4-4, four four, and it's like, they're not playing 4-4 four four timing, and that was just the thing. They weren't playing 4-4 four four timing. I had to learn the 6-8 timing. I'm gonna teach you three 6-8 beats also. The standard 6-8 beat, and then I'm gonna add two more kind of flares to it, variations to it, whatever you wanna call it. It's just gonna make it sound fancier. So let's go ahead and learn the standard 6-8 beat, and if you already have, you can skip to learn some of these extra flares I'm gonna add on to it. But without further ado, 6-8. Right hand, playing eighth notes, on our hi-hat but we're counting these much differently we're gonna just count to the number six with our right hand one two three four five six one two three four five six and it helps to emphasize that one and that four because those are where our accents are going to fall in the standard beat because our one is going to be on our kick drum and our four is going to be on our snare drum so one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Really practice that, really get that down, and then you'll be able to start playing it. So let me go ahead and just play it for you guys. And now that beat is super useful because just about any song that's in 6-8, you're able to play this with. So if the song's in 3-4, you're able to do this, but we'll talk later uh, in another video about the difference between 6-8 and 3-4. But right now, uh, just, just think about 6-8. Most songs you look up, you'll find that they're in 3-4, but they're actually in 6-8. Not super important right now. Uh, we'll talk about that later. But very important, very useful. As soon as I, as soon as I learned this, and then I played how he loves. Now I'm playing along with them. Like this is awesome. I wish I would have known this before, and then didn't look like a doofus at band practice. Let's go ahead and add our snare drum as the extra flare because it's the easier of the two. Adding an extra note on the snare drum in the song how he loves. Whenever you get to sort of uh, uh, the chorus part or if you want to add it in as an extra little fill real quick before uh, you get into the chorus It's just a really good thing to add in there. It's on the and of five So technically it's a 16th note even though we're counting it as an and so let me go ahead and run over this real quick My cat's probably gonna come get in the shot here. No No, okay. No one loves me one, two, three, four, five, and six. One, two, three, four, five, and six. Let me slow that down. One, two, three, four, five, and six. One, two, three, four, five, and six. One, two, three, four, five, and six. One. So that's all it is. Let me go ahead and plug it into the iRig. So that's a really cool beat to use and whenever I discovered that beat because like I said I was I'm, I'm a self-taught drummer so I so I'm always learning things just by playing and the more you experiment with the 6-8 beat the more you just sit there and play it you're actually gonna find a lot more you're gonna be like oh I can throw this in there and I bet it sound good and it most of the time will because 6-8 is honestly not too hard to play and so I was just playing and I threw an extra snare hit in there and then I started throwing all these extra snare hits in there at the end but that's just a good one to use and notice while I played, I had just I was playing a normal bar of 6-8, and then I'd switch it to where I played that and of 5 on the snare drum on the next bar. So that's sometimes that's commonly found in 6-8. Uh, the song Come to the Altar by Elevation Worship, when they play the chorus, they play a normal bar of 6-8, and then they add uh, like two more kick drums or uh, tom hits or however they're playing it uh, into the next bar, and then they go back to that really simple bar. Not too uncommon to be found in 6-8, but let's go ahead and work on adding our extra kick drum in now to this beat. Our kick drum is landing on the and of two. So, real slow. 
One, two, and three, four, five, six. One, two, and three, four, five, six. One, two, and three, four, five, six. Now we can add this to the other beat we just learned. So it would be one, two, and three, four, five, and six. So let me go ahead, plug it into the iRig, and I'll go ahead and just play it with the kick drum being the new thing added. And then I'll go ahead and play it as one whole entire groove. And then we'll go ahead and meet back over at the desk. We'll wrap this video up and talk about what the next video later this week's going to be. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. And hey, later on in the week, I'm gonna be talking about all the things I wish I would have learned when I started drumming that would have really helped me out now. I'm not sure how many subjects we'll talk about, but it'll probably, I'm gonna to try to at least have five. Also, we still have another drum tutorial coming up on Monday, so if you have a song you want me to teach, go ahead and leave that in the comment section below. And I know not a lot of people are watching my videos yet, so you could be the only one to comment, and I'll go ahead and I'll do a whole entire cover of that song. But in the next video, that will be later this week, which will probably be, I'm thinking Friday, I'll go ahead and tell you at the end of that what we're going to play. If no one leaves a comment, I've already said in my last video that we're going to go ahead and do Deep Cries Out by Bethel. Go ahead and subscribe below if you're interested in more content like we saw in the video today. And I'll see you guys in my next video where we'll be talking about things that I wish I would have learned when I was a beginning drummer. See you guys then.